Now you ready to talk about some weed? Maybe. Times are changing, but some things stay the same. You start each morning with a cup of coffee every day. Maybe hit the snooze, turn on the local news. But nothing good comes from a one-sided point of view. Yes, Marijuana for Dummies. I hate that title, but you know, it was the most catchy. Because there's nothing dumb about us marijuana users. We're a unique group. And if you look at some of the even the data and information statistics, it's an evolving group. But certainly a lot of professional folks, as myself, use marijuana. We, are, we enjoy, we love it. It's part of what we do. Marijuana is the thing of our time. And Vic, as part of that, everybody's looking at marijuana investment. This is what happened. Canada, just recently, I believe it was on the 17th, okay. legalized nationwide. They're the second country, Uruguay being the first, but they were the second country to legalize marijuana for recreational use nationwide even though they allow local territories, cities, whatever they, their version of it is, to determine, you know, the zoning, the particular rules for that city. Right. But nationwide. And as part of that, Vic, it sort of signaled the moving forward of marijuana as an international product, which is where a lot of the emphasis is. In other words, it's one thing to develop a product distributed nationally, sell it here, but it's another thing entirely to take it overseas. And we mentioned in the previous show some places like Lebanon who are looking at it as a cash cow to do marijuana exports to parts of the world. It's expected to happen. Let's let let's at least acknowledge that. It's expected to happen that as marijuana becomes increasingly legalized throughout the globe, that international trade is going to occur. One of the things that could happens in Canada right now is because it's been legalized, they get to utilize Canadian banking. Right now, even in places in the United States where it's legal, you have no access to banking because of the federal laws that restrict marijuana. So you have a cash cow. That makes things dangerous. you got to keep large amounts of cash on hand. You don't have the same way. So all of this is causing problems. Internationally, though, it's not, which leads us to the current state of where people's minds are going. How do I invest in marijuana? Now, I got friends, you guys, you know, because you know I'm a marijuana smoker. <laughs> and I have friends who, because they know I'm a physician and I'm a marijuana smoker, medical marijuana user, all of that, uh, that they think that I would be a likely candidate to invest in different things. And maybe, maybe not. What's interesting is I have a, another doctor friend who's currently planning for opening up a grower to be growing, to grow and have a dispensary, the whole deal, hmm. here in California. Okay. Now, what's happened, too, is that there's some municipalities who are making it clear that they embrace marijuana business. They want you to come there, set up your business there, and provide jobs. Right. So there's municipalities, like out there somewhere near Barstow, <laughs> if you think about that, Somewhere out there in the boonies, because they don't have any money and no tax base, they're inviting folks to come out and grow marijuana, build, you know, marijuana, 
you know, facilities and grow. <laughs> See? So this is what's happening because, and that's still in the face of no banking. That's just the fact that the city wants to be able to charge you fees. But I, you know what? Basically, what you're basically what you're saying is is should you try to you know or suggest or you're just passing through? Can you go and effectively start its operation without banking and all those conditions? Is it better you, you're caught between? Should I try to jump ahead with a sizable investment platform and production effort? But then I have to wait to see what engages from the municipality. Well, no, okay, no, no, not so much because that's kind of there. You could already grow. Some places are just being more friendly to you. What? But see, when you okay. say friendly, what do you mean by friendly? Uh, in- incentives when by the city for like land, they'll, you know. Right, because the smart person. Other services. The smart business person is going to say, it's like, to me, it's like building a, a football stadium. It's no, you right. want all the incentives it, it, first before you go out there and do It's actually no it. different than any kind of business deal where you want someone right. to open a store, whether it's a Walmart. Right. You talk about tax incentives, land incentives, right. lease incentives. Absolutely. Those kind of things. So, but I'm, well, but, but remember, I was just mentioning this as one of the ways that people are investing. I consider that to be the risky way to do it. That's not what I'm doing. So people say, well, Mario, what are you doing? And now, uh, but okay, I'm willing to tell you what I'm doing, but I want to first start by saying I am no way suggesting this as the way for other people. Okay? What do you mean? Because I don't want to take the responsibility if it fails. See, I can so, but I'm willing to tell you and share with you what I did. Now, if you want to just, I'm willing to give you a little bit of my background in that. Back in the '90s, early mid '90s, where people were starting to manage their stuff, I took a bunch of my, not a bunch, right. a portion of my retirement savings and put them in an account that I can manage stocks. So I did certain things. And I did okay. Okay, I did okay. That's the bottom line. So now, I'm not saying that that means I'm a guru of any sort. One of the things that I did was that they say if you don't really know what you're doing, you could try to at least invest in the things you understand. So back in the 90s, guess what I invested in, Vic? Technology stocks. Right. To online businesses. Right. And a bunch of them did very well. A bunch of them did very well. Anyway, so what I'm going so what I'm doing for, for this for marijuana is I'm looking at it differently. For one, I'm taking into account my age. I'm sixty two. I need to have investments that I make totally bring me money as soon as possible. Because even if it brings me money 10 years down the line, I'm 72 years old. So you got to invest with a different eye on things. Now, one of the things I will say is that marijuana is going to continue to grow for a while. So you have a while to get in. But the question is, where do you get in? Some things are more risky to me. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at the companies that have the most investment in them. (laughs) In other words, I'm looking at the companies in Canada, because I'm looking at Canada. I'm looking at the companies in Canada uh, that have the largest amounts of capital behind them, (laughs) because I assume that they're going to establish a niche in the market that will last for a while. Right. Because it's the making money is how you bringing money is how you make money. So so let me see marijuana. I'm gonna do this marijuana stocks, marijuana investment opportunities in Canada. Because I want you to see what kind of stuff. So I went to look at, and I don't like penny stocks. Because penny stocks tend to bring penny money. <laughs> I'm not trying it. And you can lose a bunch of them your money. So, um, 
Motley Fool was publishing some of their stuff. Okay? So, what I was looking at is the most capitalized companies in ex that are out there, thinking that whoever has the bet most capital is most likely to get in and navigate the troublesome areas. And the other thing, and what makes this good, is that I think you could almost assume growth in every area. Now, of course, if you if you invest in a particular company that's growing marijuana, doing marijuana products, and they're small, that company could fail. Yeah, like any companies fail. So what? That's why I'm looking at the huge, big companies looking specifically at their investment okay and then you can look the same places I'm looking because they're really talking about under 15 places you know and, and you'll find that they sort of cover you will find that the top five or six they'll sort of agree on sort of right you can use that as a strategy right. but I'm suggesting for me, because I need something that's going to return money sooner. Because I don't know how long I got going up in here. So I got to get my money back. So I'm investing in large, fully capitalized venture companies. Right. Who are going to experience even the short-term growth. Now, granted, they're going to have to invest back in infrastructure. Okay. Yeah, but but that, you, they'll know. Oh, yeah, but you want some money back in five years. Right. Okay? So that is my strategy. And there's still a few things going out on going on out there. But this is the idea. Okay? This is the idea. But know that, one, it's a growth area in general. But specific areas will fail. Specific marijuana businesses, just like any business, it's not like McDonald's. Right, where damn near every franchise succeeds. It's not like that. No, I agree. So this people are going to have to to make some more logical trade. If you're going to do the small stuff, which has the greatest potential for you making huge money, it still has the greatest risk. This has less risk, still some risk. Right. But I'm looking at investing in a variety of marijuana companies, uh, a, a number of whom in Canada, uh, Ag AgriFarm, uh, Canopy Growth, these are some of the names you're going to hear out there. So I'm looking to invest in some of the big ones for short-term gain. But I mean, I mean over the next, well, see, I guess that's not short-term. Next, next five to, I want, I want over, you know, next three to five years and hopefully – Definitely within, you know, you want to see that it's established a trend between three to five years, definitely. Right. right. And then hopefully do more. Yeah. No, it makes sense. I mean, I mean, they're not sitting around waiting. You know, they're all doing, setting up their infrastructure already. When it rolls out, it's already underway. What you're trying, to, you don't need what they call the, the inside information as much as you need to sit back and say, hey, look who's... Who's trailblazing, taking the lead on it? At least these considerations are there enough to give you that more so than well, to go out and be a small operation trying to take a greater risk. See, you, at least you understand my investment strategy. See, all the other stuff I don't know enough, right? If right. you want to invest in a small company. Right. But I do know, when you think about it, that the high, the largest capital, the, when, when people move into an industry, the people with the big capital tend to be the ones who establish a certain kind of foothold right. and navigate the bullshit because it tends to be corrupt. Okay, but then again, those stocks often are so expensive. That's right. But now you're in a growth phase. Which? This makes it a different thing. Yes, it is. You can assume mm -hmm. that most of the companies that are well organized and run right. could flourish. Yeah. In a flourishing market. That means right. even some bad companies will make it in a flourishing market. You just have to be patient. You just don't rush out there because it is trending heavily, you know. And Canada is different. You know, they're, they're, Canada is different. It's, it's totally different because, you know, and you're in Southern California. We're in Southern California. Oh, my God. You know what that means. 
And that brings us to the next thing. Everybody's calling me up, talking about traveling to Canada, which I love. But the thing I tell them, I said, one of the things that affects us here in Southern California is that we have everything here, and it's already wonderful. Example, here's my strain of the week. It's True OG, which is really not a morning strain, but I'm, I need to make a run to the dispensary. I'm down to my indica. This is actually an indica strain. True OG. Uh, I'm actually not smoking this right now because it's a little too potent for the morning, but I wanted you to see it. But it is the strain of the week till I get down there uh, for me. And it's a popular indica strain originally discovered in Southern California. See, the thing about traveling to Canada, and I'm going to travel to Canada, I'm going to travel to Uruguay. Just remember, I already got wonderful Southern California. I can go to the beach and have lunch here in Los Angeles, so saying, go to the mountains, so saying. go to Catalina, and I have weed and it's legal. You know what I'm saying? I don't need anything. I don't need, I don't need, I hate to say us Californians, we feel like, but we don't need anything. We got it. We got it right here yeah. in Southern California. So it's true. a wonderful time when it comes to marijuana. Yeah, so true, man. All right, you guys. Times are changing, but some things stay the same. You start each morning with a cup of coffee every day. Maybe hit the snooze, turn on the local news. But nothing good comes from a one-sided point of view. Stay for the reason.